Hi everyone, uh, Justin has certainly given me a hard act to follow. Um, well, thank you for that. That was a, 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 It's really great to be here today and thank you Anne and, and Martin as well, Joe. I know you're up the back for um, supporting me to be here. Uh, so I'm going to talk to you a little bit about postgraduate researchers and also I guess this is part of a, a broader study. So I'm going to give you a little bit of the background to the study, some of the key findings and, and signposts where you can find out a lot more about this. I'm conscious I've got 10 minutes, so I'm going to try to stick to time. Um, this uh, study came about at the start of the first lockdown, so it was a collaborative project between Smarten and Vita. Um, and the key goal of the overarching product was to, or the project was to understand what was the impact of the pandemic on this group of researchers, uh, doctor and early career researchers. Now, this is within a broader context of it being a time when there are real concerns and growing concerns about the mental health and well-being of doctor and early career researchers. For those of you who may be conducting research in this space or are familiar with the higher education sector, I'm sure you're going to be very, very aware of the growing concerns that there have been in recent years. And this work essentially has identified, again, that the pandemic has um, exacerbated in some cases a lot of these problems. So this is part of a wider project. So there was some quantitative and qualitative survey data uh, that were collected. I'm going to focus on more so the qualitative data, but I'll just give you a little bit of the background to the, the quantitative project as well, which was led by uh, Nicola Byram as well. Um, and in terms of the actual qualitative study, so this part of the project focused on what were some of the challenges that were experienced and also what were some of the benefits. There were some other open-ended questions in there as well around supervision, um, and I'll be able to point you in the direction of this. I'm going to say that the, I'm only very much representing a much bigger team here, so I do want to acknowledge um, the fantastic authors that had the opportunity to work with on this project um, during, um, I suppose, during the pandemic it was at this point. And we have published the findings from this work, and it is open access. So. If you go to um, higher, edu higher education, you'll be able to see uh, the full project there. Um, but to start out, just to give a little bit of the background, so this is Nicola's project in terms of the quantitative data. Um, so specific to that project, um, the, the survey opened, it, it was in the first, pretty much almost the first month of the pandemic. These data are from just 4,800 researchers, um, of which three quarters were PhD researchers. And there were two measures in there, the WEMWEBS and the Bethesda Six that I'm just focusing on here. And we can see here in the two figures, these were some of the, the ratings as regards mental well-being and psychological distress. So we see quite a large proportion of participants are in the, either the moderate or the high um, psychological distress uh, on the bottom, and then in the, the top, we can see here that quite a significant amount are in the, the lower end or the modern um, section for mental well-being. So this is kind of the, the context at the start of the pandemic. So to look a little bit further to that, we our qualitative study, we took a, a stratified random sample. So we We've data from over a thousand doctoral researchers and ECRs in here. Um, and there were two key questions. Have there been any benefits for the pandemic for your work? And also what have been the most challenging aspects? And from there, um, we had a team of us uh, from the Smarten Network um, who analyzed these data. So we did thematic analysis and then also connecting analysis. So within um, each of the open-ended responses, what were participants actually can make some connections there. So we sought to explore that as well. Um, and as I said, this was uh, from a team of, of, our team was composed of ECRs and doctor researchers from the Smart Network. So um, Nicola and the network very much helped to make this happen and brought us all together to be able to do this. In terms of what we found, so almost um, over three quarters of the participants reported challenges and just under half reported some benefits. And what was really interesting is actually there was quite a considerable amount of overlap there. So what some people perceived to be challenges actually were benefits for others and vice versa. So what we see here is that there's quite a lot of variation in terms of 
how the pandemic was influencing or impacting on doctoral and early career researchers. We know that the doctoral research community and the early research community is quite a very heterogeneous sample um, population. So there's lots of variation in terms of um, the participants here as well. And we did sample from you know, across different disciplines. And I'm going to give you a little bit of insight into that as regards some of the findings too. So if we go into the challenges, so this is kind of some of the outputs from our, our thematic analysis, so our, 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 our key points, but also around some of these connections that were coming through. Um, I'm going to kind of touch on some of the, the actual extracts and, and the data that, that we analyzed, but what we see coming through here are some of the key elements. So on the left hand side, we can see kind of some themes around workload issues. Um, people's kind of that blurred work-life boundary and also it was a poor work environment so a lot of people find that really challenging now I'm suddenly at home I don't find this is a, as good a workspace for me um, and, and certainly for for others um, you know they spoke about it was just ergonomically you know their, their space was not set up for them to be able to work effectively um, many also spoke about this disruptive uh, contact with people, they weren't uh, able to connect with their peers, with their supervisors in the same way, and there was that isolation as well. And over here on the, the right hand side, we did see, you know, a lot of uh, participants spoke about that reduced mental health and well-being. They felt a lot more stressed, a lot more anxious, um, and also many felt that, that was impacting on, you know, whether or not they were able to be motivated for their work and how they were able to focus as well. Um, and a very consistent thing and somewhat unsurprisingly is that generally speaking there were research setbacks regardless of discipline so AH um, uh, is arts and humanities you know we saw for a lot of um, participants in these disciplines not being able to access archives for example um, not being able to do field work presented a real significant challenge um, we also see those who needed access to a lab weren't able to access a lab so again this presented real challenges at the outset of the pandemic, again, what do I do? We don't know what is going to happen after this. And there was a lot of uncertainty there for people as well. So research setbacks for a doctor researcher, especially those working towards a deadline, that uncertainty, what is going to happen? Am I going to be able to make my deadlines and so on? Um, the poor working environment, so a lot of distractions for people. Um, I'm sure many will may be able to empathize with this as well. Um, and they really struggled to find that time. Um, when would they be able to, to work? Again, we think a lot of doctor researchers, their, their study space may not be set, or their home space may not be set up for them to be able to work effectively at home, especially at the outset. And we've also said, uh, as I said a lot, spoke about that disruptive contact. I can't connect with my peers. And we know peer support is really, really crucial for doctor researchers. And also that supervisory support. It wasn't as easy to access supervisors to speak to them and so on. So that lack of social contact was very much to the fore. On the other hand, uh, there were some perceived benefits uh, of the lockdown. And for many, um, this focus around you know, time, actually, even though some felt they had less time, many actually felt they had more time, whether that was through Matt now having to commute, um, whether that was because, for uh, obvious reasons, they weren't actually able to go ahead with their planned uh, research and um, projects and so on, so they had to make some changes. So they might have dedicated more time to writing, for example, uh, rather than, you know, because they weren't able to engage in that research. For a lot of people, there was that improved work-life balance. All of a sudden now, they were actually, because they weren't spending a lot of time on the road, maybe commuting, they were able to be able to dedicate that time to improving their work-life balance. And there was a sense as well that for some people, their productivity could be improved because they felt that the work environment was actually better at home than it was when they were in the office. So there were some variations um, versus what I mentioned earlier as well. Um, and this is probably one really good example from one of the doctoral researchers who spoke about, you know, now I have some extra time, I can actually put that towards some of those activities that help me, um, dedicate some time towards those um, health enhancing activities, some of my hobbies, and I'm just catching up with some friends that I haven't been able to speak to for quite a while as well. Um, 
we also then in turn from there, um, there was that sense that my work-life balance has improved as a result of that. Um, so they felt that because they had that better work environment, um, they were also able to have a little bit more autonomy over their day. Um, they were able to decide when they would take a break to relax and so on as well. Um, so again, we can see here that there were some perceptions of, of benefits in those early stages. And then for some, actually the pandemic presented them with new research opportunities. Um, they were suddenly able to engage in uh, new research because of the pandemic, maybe supporting people, helping people, uh, and helping the response in those situations as well. So from that perspective, there were some silver linings that were there. But I guess the key thing for us as a team was considering what, what do we need to consider moving forward? Um, and as we move out of the pandemic somewhat, um, we know there's, there's going to be a lot more remote working, but how are we actually supporting that? Um, so I think there are some key questions around this. How do we uh, you know, support doctor researchers to maintain that work-life balance, especially when the temptation may be to work for longer, for example, um, if they're working at home? How do we kind of essentially make them feel that actually I can put away my laptop, I don't need to keep on working? Also, how do we know if they have adequate space and resources? Okay, so that's another consideration. Also think about that isolation. How are we supporting those, those peer relationships? If we don't have those kind of same communal spaces or they're not operating the same way as they did pre-pandemic, what are we doing to support those peer relations if remote working does con uh, continue into the future? And also what are we doing to catch up we missed out on a lot of networking opportunities, which you know are so crucial to doctor and early career researchers. What can we do to help and support them to be able to um, develop those connections that are going to ultimately help them moving forward with their careers as well? And also addressing these concerns around kind of funding uncertainty, employment precarity, which we know is very high within the sector in this population doctoral researchers right now, how are we going to ensure that we can minimise the impact for those who are graduating, whether they go stay in academia or go into industry and so on. So again, these are just some key questions for us to think about in terms of our support for doctoral researchers. Um, so I'm going to close just by raising awareness of some of the, the additional research. So um, I know this morning um, it was mentioned about some of the funded projects. I was very lucky to be a part of one of those. So you can find out details about that project um, at the link above. So that was the getting off to a mentally healthy start in doctoral study project. Um, so we looked at uh, principles that could be used to inform inductions to support uh, doctoral researchers from the start of their studies. And also, if you'd like to come and join our Smarten Labs every two months um, that were mentioned this morning as well, please do get in touch uh, with that. And the final thing, oh, yeah, there was a final slide, but there's more details of the study I've just spoken about, as I said, in the paper and also on the website. Thank you, Thank you very much.